Hey guys, welcome to the last and final part of authentication with AWS Amplify. This is going to be the last part where we actually implement the authentication functions that we have been preparing to do all of this part series. So now enjoy, dig in, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. So now we're gonna go to Amplify. Um, we're gonna go to the, whatever you call this, docs. And we're just gonna look at some code, basically. So here we have the current fetch current auth session session. So whenever this is called, we're gonna fetch the auth session of the user. So inside of our auth service, we're just going to throw that in there. Oh, and don't forget to import Amplify and Amplify plugins, which looks like it's gonna give me an error for some reason. Maybe not, maybe. But um, yeah, it should theoretically work. Theoretically. Uh, but yeah, so we have fetch current auth session. So now what we can do is we can just call auth services shared session of fetch current auth session. And we can check the auth session of the user whenever the view did load. So let's do auth service dot shared fetch current is that what it is fetch current auth session auth session there we go and let's just run it maybe we'll give swift a refresher it'll let it know that hey i'm not doing anything wrong here uh initialize requires a body yes it does I'll just put a body on there my bad and it seems to work coolio so let's see our uh, login and it looks like I am currently signed in and that is because I have already made this video multiple times because uh, OBS was being a little bad boy so I'm actually just going to change my device for you guys and we're gonna go on iPhone 11 Pro Max uh, pretend you didn't see that user is not signed in right now okay so we're on a brand new device I haven't run this program on this device yet so let's check the real auth session let's bring that back here we go there we go user is signed in false okay so we, our user is currently not signed in yeah just totally ignore what you saw there on the iPhone 12 Pro Max totally ignore it but you can see that our UI is nicely coded up we can Enable the keyboard right here, and we're going to be good there. That's supposed to be our email, so oh well. Yeah, but our buttons don't do anything yet, um, so let's change that. Let's close that out so OBS doesn't blow up on me. Um, yeah, so let's go back to our auth service and implement register. So what we need is register. And we also need a sign in. We probably also need like forget password and stuff, but um, I'm not gonna do that in this video. It's gonna take way too long. I'll probably also do sign out. Why not? Why not? Yeah, so we'll do register, sign in, and sign out. So what we can do is we can go to the docs again. Always go to the docs, they're very helpful guys. Let me just, whoop. Just throw it in, register, sign up. There it is, I'm done. That's all you have to do, guys. Um, no, but you can definitely edit this code, but this is a very basic functionality that they give you for it that totally works as a basic and production functionality if that's what you think production is for you. Um, yeah, so all you need to do is input a username, password, and email. And then it's got your back. It's going to do all the heavy lifting for you right there. It's not even that heavy, but it's okay. Um, and it's going to try to sign you up for a new user in your Cognito that is linked to your Amplify configurations, which is great. And then if it works, if it's a success, um, if this is that thing where you're going to email that code, if we never set up that Lambda trigger, it's going to come into this block right here. But we did set up that Lambda trigger, so it should theoretically never come in here um, since we set up that Lambda trigger, and it's just going to come in here. 
Um, and once we see this signup complete, that means that the user will ha have been created in Cognito. So let's just refresh Cognito real quick. And you can see that the estimated number of users is currently zero. So um, we're just going to sign up. We're just going to sign up for the user. Um, and then you can see that the estimated number will go up. But before we do that, let's th throw in. So this is that confirm. This is that confirm sign up thing for the code if you wanted to retrieve that via email. We have the sign in function here, which is pretty simple. Let's just copy and paste it, throw it in there. So this is the sign in function for users. Username, all you need is username and a password. And then you probably want to switch these errors also, by the way. Um, it's not going to give me the choices right now because something's going bad with Swift or Xcode, but it's okay. Uh, you probably want to switch those errors and then kind of do some more error handling. But uh, since sign up and sign in are two different things, we do need to explicitly call these two things. And let's just let's just call fetch current auth session uh, after these things, just because. Um, I don't know if I need a self in there. Probably do. Let's just call fetch current auth session right after we're done doing those things, and you can see. How that works and we have a sign out that we want to implement so sign out probably here somewhere sign in auth events sign out there we go and that's sign out locally this is sign out globally we'll just take the local one whatever i believe the sign out globally is sign out of all devices that you're currently signed in so there's that. Uh, let's just make it a bit better. There you go. Sign out locally. And there's just a simple sign out button. It just calls amplify.auth.signout. So we're good to go there. And then we can just fetch our current auth session after that. Let's add a button for that sign out too, since we did not do that. So sign out button. Sign out. Let's make this red. System red. Let's make this one system red actually. And we can make this label. Now let's make it white. I find that white looks better on red. Um, probably a bolder one, but it's okay. Uh, let's add the sub view, sign out button, and then just add some quick constraints for it. Oops, sign out button. Yep, and we're just going to do 55 and 60. Cool. So now all we have to do is link up the buttons with the functions, and we should be good to go. So let's just whip up some Objective-C functions real quick, because that's what's going to be compatible with the buttons. Let's do the register called first. We're going to do auth service dot shared dot sign up and what we're going to do is user text field dot text password text field dot text and email text field dot text and this is going to give me an error because it actually wants a guaranteed value while this is currently optional so what we can do is guard let username equals user text field dot text else return and this just gives you the username variable which is guaranteed instead of this not guaranteed value and if this does not currently exist because if you have nothing currently in your username text field then it's just going to return and not do anything so make sure you have something in your text field so we'll just whip this up real quick so this pass and this is email cool so we should be good to go there and that is our register. So our register function is actually complete. Now we just have to copy that, throw that in twice, sign in called. We actually just kind of want to make sure that's there too. I guess we don't need email, whatever. We don't need that. We can just call sign in. Let's do our username and pass. And then we want to sign out called. 
And actually, we don't need anything there. We can just sign out. Sign out locally. Yep. Good to go. And let's finally just... Um, Let's just add let's just add the target for that. So register button dot add target self selector is register called for touch up inside. Let me just do that three times. Sign uh, let's do sign up. Oh that's register actually. So sign in button, sign out button, change this to sign in called sign out called so if everything works we should be good to go according to plan we have our function here we are sign up function sign in sign out so let's go ahead and do this thing let's test it out see if we made any mistakes it's launching let's go Xcode I'm going to enlarge the console a little bit so you guys can kind of see what's going on on the back end. Okay, cool. So we have our register, we have our sign in, and we have our sign out. Um, when we sign out, does it call fetch auth? It does. Cool. Okay, so you can see we are currently signed in, and that is false. So we're not signed in. So I'm going to clear that. So let's make a new email at henry.com. Username Henry, and the password is going to be some weird password like that, right? So this is going to be my user, new uh, new user. The name's Henry. That's my password. That's my email. Let's register this baby. Register. Sign up complete. See, uh, I I am now registered as a user, but I am not signed in. So let's check Cognito. This estimated number of users should have gone up. Uh, or maybe not. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's just not updating, I guess. But um, yeah, we have our user called Henry in there now. So we're good to go there. We are not signed in, though. So let's sign in right here. And it's still pulling this uh, data from these fields, right? You'd probably want this on another page, but this is just example purposes. So let's sign in right here. Sign in succeeded. Now I am signed in. I am good to go. Cool. And um, if I try to sign in again, it'll probably give me an error. So yeah, operation performed. It's not a valid operation. Current auth state. That's because I'm already, I'm already signed in, right? So it it knows I'm signed in. It does. So I'll clear that. And then now I can sign out. Successfully signed out. And you can see, currently signed in status is false. I'm gonna sign in again. User signed in, user signed out. Cool stuff, guys. You have now created an authentication and user pool for your application. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you do it with AWS Amplify. And if you really boil it down to what I did in this video, it's it's really not that difficult, guys. Um, you just make some UI. You got to do some UI changes, obviously, when you sign in and sign out. Probably want to um, do some kind of... Uh, you know, function property with that, like get or set or something. But yeah, it's not that terrible. And um, I know I had, I did have trouble like trying to understand this stuff myself when I first came into Amplify as well. But uh, once you guys get it, it's, it's really not that bad. But um, you know, I, that's just me saying it. Uh, it could be definitely really confusing for you guys. It just doesn't seem too difficult for me anymore because, you know, I've been working around it for quite a while. But if you guys have any other questions for me or if you uh, need any help, just let me know. I'm here for you. Uh, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out um, for real. Uh, and it lets me know that you guys like the content too. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I'm definitely going to be making more Amplify videos because I just love the framework a lot and I've just been working in it. Might as well make some more tutorial videos. There aren't that many on YouTube, but yes. So thank you guys so much for watching and let me know what other content you got you guys would like to see in the future. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue on my programmed schedule, even though that might not be a lot because I know I haven't been uploading that much, but 
thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>